front of the train for Basingstoke and Fareham. The back of the train will call at Pool and Wareham. Change at Woking for Bournemouth and for Boston. Change at Winchester for Brock and Paris, calling at Southampton Central. For the Weymouth line, take the train on platform nine. Here's some announcements, some special announcements. Read the announcements and make it clear so they can hear. The special for Devil on platform 11 will now leave from seven. He's arranged to make this change the nine five from El Tribune will leave on the dawn. But here's the most important announcement of the law. The 852 to Waterloo Jew platform 13 it's bringing your boy in so start ship a boy in your sailor or your marine you may find a soldier who's the world to you you might even find a little ac2 in air force blue the 852 The cab would start so quickly. I accept your apology. Where are we bound for? Will I for Oh, no, please don't be angry. You see, I'm just back on leave. I've been out east. You're the first white woman I've seen in 18 months. Uh-uh. Oh, no, please, I'm really quite harmless. Michael O'Moore's the name. My friends call me Rory. Rory O'Moore, get it? Naive, isn't it? Look, I accepted your offer of the cab, but I had no idea that in England, if you took the cab, you took the small talk, too. Oh, but of course, you're American. My uncle lost most of his money in U.S. Pity he didn't lose his family, too. Poor Uncle Talbot. 
He felt rather heavenly for a dancer in the paradise. He decided he wanted to take it away from it all, and she decided she wanted to take it all away from him. They both did it. <laughs> <laughs> How good the thought that is. Okay, you win. I'm going to Bloomsbury. Where can I drop you off? Ah, there's something else you didn't know about England. Over here, the men drop the ladies off first, Miss, um, Miss... Arden, Terry Arden. And to save wear and tear on the patter, I've just arrived from New York, and I came via Lisbon, the Azores, Lisbon, Gibraltar, Lisbon. Well, why did you keep going back to Lisbon? I left my gloves someplace. <laughs> Then my dad died, and I inherited his half of the business. So I don't know why I'm telling you. My dear girl, this is one of the romances of modern industry. Might one ask what you make at your factory? Yeah, date. Date. We are known as Miss London Limited. I couldn't be more intrigued. We supply escorts for gentlemen soldiers on leave. Gentlemen soldiers eat guards. Oh, it's all on the level. Oh, but of course. Well, what about me, the original gentleman soldier? Could you send a lovely escort and a plain van to my hotel? Uh-uh. I'm afraid all customers have to be vouched for. Well, this is me. Thanks for the buggy ride. But my face should be my voucher, Miss Arden. If you care to drop us a line, your case will be gone into. Now, how much do I owe you? Nonsense. This is England where the men pay. Now, look at these eyes, Miss Arden. Clean living, blue, one finchy. My mother always said, son, she said, you have your father's nose, but a gentleman's eyes. Okay, you'll be my first customer. But my mother always said, watch a man with a mustache. Oh, that's a fallacy. You may not like my mustache at first, but it'll grow on you. Swell. You must teach me how to wax it. Okay. She'll be looking all over Lisbon for these. the right place. Not if you want any money. Oh, it's like that, huh? Lady, it's more than just like that. It's... Woohoo! My name's Terry Arden. Terry Arden? Well, uh, I'm free tonight if that's any good. Look, I'm here on business. Tell Miss London I've arrived. Look, Miss London doesn't see anybody without an appointment. Oh, she'll see me. I'm her new partner. Uh, you're her new... You're her new partner. Yeah, I'm your new half-boss, so step on it. Well, how do I like that? Welcome to the firm, half-boss. Oh, I don't suppose you could pay me your half of my back salary. <laughs> <laughs> you catch on quick. Uh-uh, we have to knock. It's an old English custom. <coughs> There's a smasher called Miss Arden to see you. Miss London. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Will you... I, I, I won't keep you a minute. Hello. Oh, is that you, Marquis? Who? <coughs> what? <coughs> Operator. Miss. But there must be some mistake. I'm connected with the Spitfire Squadron over the channel. Wonderful things, telephone. Yes, but there must be a short circuit or a short wave or something. Mm. On the other hand, it might be a short cord. Oh, those moths eat anything. Now, if it's not too much trouble, perhaps you could dust off Miss London and tell her I'm waiting. Well, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I am Miss London. You? Yes, it's only a technical nomda thing. Arthur Bowden is my name, single is my station. Well, suffering Pete. My mother was the original Miss London, now it's my firm. At least half of it is. The other half belongs to some doddering old bird in America. Hmm. Now, uh, what can I do for you? I'm the doddering old bird. <laughs> eh? Here's all the papers and deeds and affidavits. Of course, we'll have to do something about all this. You mean you're... Uh-huh. Joe! Joe! Come here! Wonderful, isn't it? Haven't I told you not to do that? I'm sorry, you're making trousers baggy. Well, don't stand there doing nothing. Go and get your new boss a cup of tea. He's only my half boss. Well, get a half a cup then. You have to excuse him, he's a bit hard of thinking. Well, what are you waiting for? Money. Do you mean to say you haven't got enough money for three cups of tea? No, have you? Don't answer one question with another. You're lucky you're earning a small salary. It's less you don't get at the end of the week. Whew, this place smells terrible. I know, it's the business. It's rotten. Gee, I'm sorry for being a foul puss, but all this is a bit of a shock to the system. I expected to find a thriving business and look at it. People don't seem to want escorts anymore. I can't understand it. Do you advertise? Well, we did. Money? My last check came back stamped insufficient rubber. Well, we're all in this together now. Oh, good. I'm sure we'll be happy together. I mean, in, in business, Miss Arden. You'd better call me Terry. You'd better call me Arthur. You'd better call me when this is all over. 
Oh, Joe, I want you to meet Miss Terry Arden. Terry, this is Joe. Hello, Joe. What do you know, Joe? I know I'm still free tonight. Swell. Then you can help us disinfect this joint. Haven't you guys ever heard of an invention called the duster? Well, as a matter of fact, the woman what dust for us isn't doing for us anymore. She shook the dust from her feet. And here's the very dust. Ugh. Oh, of course. No sugar. We'll soon fix that. Come on, couple. Normally, we allow a ten-second dip, but you can have my dip, too. It still doesn't make sense. You should have a gold mine here in Miss London. There's thousands of lonely men in town. Americans, Canadians, Australians. Miss London Limited should be the busiest firm in the world. Think of all the lonely offices and... Great grief. What's up? Captain Michael O'Moore. I promised him a Miss London. What, a customer? Have you got any girls free tonight? All of them, I should think. Well, how many girls have you got? Well, about two dozen. Swell, let's see some pictures. This way to the pictures, lady. No standing in the futile. No standing in the nines. Children in arms not admitted without parents or guardian. They're in there. Well, what do I look like? The girl with the X-ray eyes? Open it up. Key, Joe. I haven't got it. You got it. I haven't got it. Well, I haven't got it. Well, who had it last? You did. All right, well, we won't use the key. Well, I'm glad somebody had it. There they are, all filed under their various specialities. Dancing, light conversation, forfeit whist. My, but this is Trey Gay. Say, what is this, a gag? No, that's Felicity Atwater. She's free. Free? She ought to pay people to take her out. Oh, I don't know. She's got her good points. <clears throat> There you are. Does that mind cigarette smoke? Go on. Have another dip. Yes, go on. Every time a prize. Oh, now, she's all right. For what? The only date she'd get is on her tombstone. Oh, let's be fair. Here you are. Remarks. Most amusing has whistling tooth. Who's this, Amazon? That's Granny Hobday. She's got quite a nice figure. She's got a pair of calves only a cow could love. That's nothing like one there with a wooden leg. No wonder there's no business. Who picked these orchidaceous lovelies? Your father. My for the love of Pete, haven't you changed the stock since then? I told him they were a bit long in the teeth. Have they still got teeth? Well, if you'd like us to change a few of them. A few? We're changing the lot. We're going to get some real girls. Glamour girls. Ooh, glamour girls. And to start with, we've got to get someone for Captain Michael O'Moore tonight. I've got some phone numbers here. We'll try this generation first. Well, I know a jolly nice girl, only I think she's working. Is she in a show? No, she's a welder at Vickers. We're going to get Miss Lunnons that every man in England will want to go out with. We're going to do for the English girl what Ziegfeld did for the American girl. What did Ziegfeld do? I don't know. I read the papers lately. He glorified them. That's what he did. Over his stage door were the words, through this door past the most beautiful girls in America. That's what's going over our door. Only they'll be British. Yes, Terry. Ziegfeld started life without any shoes to his feet. When he died, he had millions. Ooh, I wonder who cleaned them all. We'll search high and low for glamour. I'll cover the restaurants, theaters, cabarets. You cover the department stores and dance halls. And I'll cover the waterfront. You'll cover the subways and railroad stations. Anything you say, Terry. First, we're going to clean this office up, and then I'm going to make you girl conscious. You've already done that. Say, what the heck's the matter with you? Things have come to a pretty pass. You can laugh if you wish. But here am I in what I would class as a pretty kettle of fish. Never had a single wrinkle on my carefree brow. But you change that in a twinkle. Look at the darn thing now. It's a fine. How do you do? I used to be fancy free till I bumped into you. A fine. How do you do? I thought I was past all this, and now it's got me through. I'm going to lose my standing with all of the gang. They'll say I'm whimsy, whimsy, but they can go hang. It's a fine, how do you do? The day that I lost my heart, and it was found by you. How 
do you do? I'm testing a new connection. Tell me if I'm through. This is the third or fourth time you've opened this line. I wish that darn subscriber would make up his mind. It's a fine. How do you do? The day that I lost my heart and it was found by you. Excuse me, miss. I wonder if... I beg your pardon? I wonder if you could tell me the right time. There is a clock on the station. There is indeed. Excuse me, I wonder if I could interest you in a little proposition, but first of all, allow me, my car. Oh, good afternoon, Corporal. I was just about to make a suggestion to this young lady. I don't like strangers making suggestions to my girl. Oh, I quite understand, but of course, in these days, we've all got to put up with things we don't like, and... I said, I don't like strangers making suggestions to my girl. Oh, come, come, Corporal. <laughs> I... I... I think so. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You, uh... You don't mind if I talk to you for a moment? Well, why should I? Do you know, I think you're the very person I've been looking for. I have a little proposition I think might interest you. Now, isn't that a coincidence? So have I. Hey? But go ahead. What's yours? Well, I don't know quite how to put it. You can't formulate your ideas into words. I know. That's the way it is with most people. It's mostly due to one not having coordinated one's knowledge on the table chair of one's mind. Oh, is that what it is? Have you ever tried to tabulate the things you know? You haven't. There's no reason why you should when it's all done for you in 36 handsome volumes bound to window cards. But I don't understand. I... You don't understand how we can give away 36 volumes without a deposit? Well, I... Oh, they all say that. It's just part of our wonderful service. Now, you sign there, we do the rest. But what's all this about? The businessman's encyclopedia in 36 handsome volumes. Now, do please sign. There's a policeman watching. He'll think it's strange me holding out this pen if you don't do something about it. Policeman? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You pay for the books on delivery. Goodbye. Be sorry, it didn't hit you, did it? No, but you can chalk it up as a near miss. It got out of control on the second landing. I had an auntie who did that once. <laughs> I mean, she dropped her bag downstairs. Oh, look. Aren't they pretty? Not these, my powder. Never mind, we'll soon sweep that back into the box. I'll get a broom. Thank you, but I don't think my face would stand Waterloo Natural. Gail Martin, is that your name? Uh-huh. Oh, what a pretty name. I always think that... <laughs> man annoying you, miss? Annoying me? Why, no. You're quite sure? Of course I'm sure. He's been annoying a lot of other young ladies. Oh, I haven't. 
He's very kind. He's helping me pick up my things. All right, miss. As for you, what's your step? You're not Dr. Jekyll, are you? No, I'm Arthur Hyde. I mean, Arthur Bowden. And I wasn't annoying young ladies. I was just propositioning them. You were? Oh, just a business proposition. I wanted them to work for me. <laughs> I don't think you understand. You don't have to explain to me. Oh, but I do. I wouldn't want you to think that... Well, actually, it's very simple. You see, I'm Miss London. You are Miss London. Yes. That's well, fine. thanks for the help. Oh, listen, Miss Martin, you mustn't carry that heavy bag. You'll strain yourself. But I can manage, thank you. I insist on carrying it. Now, look, I know you must fear the worst, but I'm not a bluebeard. Honestly, I'm not. I'm looking for glamour girls to escort the troops on leave. I'm sorry, little man, but I really did expect to get a needle in the arm any minute. Miss Martin, would you like to be a Miss London? Me? But I'm no glamour girl. Oh, looks aren't everything. Well, thanks. What I mean is, what is glamour? It usually means that the value of the package exceeds the contents. You got out of that very nicely. Ah, but you've got internal glamour, Miss Martin. You've got something. I don't know what it is, but you've got it. Besides, you're the only one who hasn't looked down on me as if you were wearing still, so please do it. But this is crazy. I work for the railway company. But not all the time. I mean, you're not working for them at this very minute. I'm on 24 hours leave. Well, think what you can do for your country during that 24 hours leave. Think of what Miss London will do for the boys. Back home on leave. Foot sore, weary, wanting to relax. I don't relax well. And then into their lives, like a fairy godmother, comes the sort of girl they've had stuck on the walls of their billets. They don't stick my type on walls. Besides, I can't go back to the firm without a single Miss London. Oh, do come back if it's only to meet the others. You ought to be selling vacuum cleaners, and I ought to have my head examined. Gail, Miss Martin, you'll come? We'll get a taxi right away. It'd have served me right if I woke up in a nightclub in South America. Oh, I don't think we've opened a branch there yet. Now, look, kids, I want to thank you again for offering to help us. I want to stress that this is absolutely on the level, and you are doing a national service and helping the boys when they come home on leave. We're going to charge escort fees, and after office expenses have been deducted, the balance will go to the Prisoners of War Fund. Every client will be checked as far as it's in our power to check him. When you're on a job, you're working for the firm until midnight. From then on, the time and the initiative is yours. Now, let's get acquainted. We'll start with Virginia. It is Virginia, isn't it? That's right. Virginia Drake. And what hours can you give us? Well, practically any time. You mean you're not working? Not for the moment. I was a part-time nurse, but there's been a spot of bother. <laughs> I woke someone up to give them a sleeping powder. Put it down, Joe. Virginia Drake, blonde, medium height, NG for doctors. Any other selling points? Well, I was up on Norwood's Venus de Milo in the Buy a Battleship pageant. Put that down too, Joe. Up on Norwood's Venus de Minus. Sheila King, 21, shop assistant, part-time Wharton. Any time except Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Oh, and tonight, I've got a date with a commando. Just put Sheila King, brunette, okay for commandos and other men with steady nerves. And you're Una? Yes, Una Ray. I'm a mannequin. Voluntary canteen worker and ex-airplane spotter. Ex-plane spotter? Yes, the air ministry complained. They said the planes kept coming down to spot me. I can see you're going to be a big success with us. Put that down, Joe. Unire, brunette, OKREF. She adores the very air they fly through. And last but not least, Iris Dale, showgirl and fire watcher. I'm game for practically anything, but I won't go out with married men. That sounds like the voice of experience talking. <laughs> you're not kidding. Okay, Joe. Iris Dale, brunette, NG for married men. No Friana match for her. This is the office proper. Oh, sorry. Arthur, where have you been? We thought you'd been arrested. I would have been only for this young lady. Gail, this is Terry Arden. This is Gail Martin. My Miss London. Look, I don't know why I'm here at all. I'm not the type you want. Why not? We want all types. That's what I keep telling her. Come on in. Take your helmet off. Sure, kid. What have you got to lose? But you can do better than me. I look like Sophie Tucker compared with them. Well, Sophie Tucker didn't do too badly. Now, you sit down there and don't fuss so. Any more fares, please? No standing on top. And uh, what have you done for the war effort? I gave up my rubber girdle. Oh, so you're all out for war. <laughs> You are a funny little man. Well, thanks. Why don't you tour her around with you? Here, what are we going to do about Captain Rory O'Moore? Oh, yes, he must have a Miss London for tonight. Oh, I forgot about that. Which of you kids would like to go to the Splendide? Don't look at me. My hair feels like straw. And I've got to do canteen duty tonight. I'd love to, but I've got a date with my commando. Commando, eh? Going to spend the evening in some nice, quiet Norwegian fjord. And what about Blue Ridge, Virginia? I'd never get back to Upper Norwood and change in time. This is a fine fettle of kish. Kittle of fish, fishel of cats, cuddle of fosh. Why don't you boys sell the whole routine to Abbott and Costello? Where do you think we got it? <laughs> what about you, Gail? What, me go out with that? Oh, no. Gail, the answer to the captain's prayer. Oh, you love him, Gail. He's short and dark. You've never even seen him. He's tall and fair. I must get these glasses changed. He's a nice guy. You'll like him. 
But my clothes. Oh, we'll soon have those off you. I mean, we... Oh, uh... shut up, Arthur. Look, you kids can go now. Show them out, Joe. Come in tomorrow sometime. Bring some pictures for the file. Yes, come in any time you like. You're all part of the firm now. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. What do I do? I should feel kind of silly with someone I don't even know. Look, he's an all right person. He's had escorts from us before. He's what? Will you keep your little mouth shut? Go on out, Arthur. I want to have a talk with Gail. And he's never given any trouble before? Not a sign of it. Well, not that I'm scared. Of course you're not scared. Now, we've got to find something for you to wear. Well, I've got some things in my case, but I haven't got an evening gown. Oh, we'll fix you up with something. Arthur! <coughs> oh, I knew I was right. L look what it does to your trousers. Get that bag in here. Yeah, ma'am. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. Just take it easy. I'll tell you all the rules before you go. Yes, and then you can tell us a few when you come back. Well, I still think I ought to have my head examined. Oh, there's nothing wrong with your head. Just keep it. And remember, there's many a girl being taken in when she thought she was being taken out. Will you shut up? Here, hold on to this. Well, wherever they go, I like to keep my eye on my Miss Londons. If you have any qualms at all, ring us up. And if there's no reply, dial 999 and ask for the police. Now I don't want the police. Goodbye. Oh, it's the Hotel Splendid. Ask for Captain Michael O'Moore. Put me through to Captain Michael O'Moore. Yes, tell him Miss London. This is Miss London. All right, I've got a deep voice. It's broken. Yes, yeah, speaking. Miss London Limited. Oh, yes, of course. At what time and where would you like your escort delivered? Yeah. My escort? Are you on the level? Certainly we're on the level, and incidentally, so is our escort. Of course, if you've changed your mind... Oh, no, 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 no. But I never expected it. Well, please do, yes. Well, ask her to be here at, um, uh, 8 o'clock. Yes, terrific. Oh, oh hello. Um, uh, what's her name? Miss Gail Martin. Oh, and Captain, don't forget, Miss London Limited has eyes everywhere. And remember, honey soir, qui mali ponce. Well, darn my socks. Now, what are you grinning at? Remember, on his qui mal y pense. Come in. You rang, sir, wasn't it? Yes, Romero. I'm on the finest supper you can give me at 8.15. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. A supper for one at 8.15 o'clock. Supper for two, Romero. For two? Supper for two. Ah. And there's no ah about it. I remember the last supper for two I fixed. Yes, I should imagine fixed is the right word. They was on their honeymoon. He was a little old, maybe. She was a little young. But they were such a loving couple. He called her darling and she called him sir. Yes, well, and I don't want one of those suppers. I'm hungry. At the present moment, I could eat a horse. Ah, then I suggest fricassee of beef. There's no need to take me literally. Look, you just relapse with your guest. I will bring a cushion for the sofa. And I will make you such a meal just for the mood of the evening. The trouble with you, Romero, is that you have an inferiority complex. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Save lectric, sir. The mood of this evening is food. Both the young lady and myself want to eat. Do you understand? Eat, sir? Yes, yes sir. On his work, he mally passed, Romero. I'm afraid that's off tonight, sir. Save electric, sir. On the contrary, it is very much on. Now, you plan me the sort of meal you'd serve if I was entertaining my maiden aunt. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Perhaps a little light wine, oh, sir. Never mind about the wine. I don't even know if she drinks. Ah, they are usually the worst. Those that don't drink, sir. Will you get out? Immediately, sir. Yes, sir. Perhaps turkey cigarettes would be very nice touch for a female lady, sir. I don't even know if she smokes. Now go. If they don't smoke or drink, it's bad. in heaven's name. And what's all this nonsense? Nonsense? Orchids? I said a maiden art, not Miss Brandish. I thought it would be a nice touch, sir. And what's that smell? It's a very special perfume called Temptation, sir. Oh, I bet that's another nice touch. Most of them like it, sir. And who said anything about candles? I, I thought, thought it would be, be a, a nice, nice touch, touch, sir. Blow them out. Both of them, sir? And turn out the lights, open the windows and get this stink out. It smells like an Armenian harem. Eight o'clock? That'll be her. Let her in, Romero. I'm half naked. 
Captain. I hope I'm not late. I am not the Captain, Miss. Uh, I wish I was. Please come inside and make yourself comfortable. Well, I'm so sorry to keep you. Well, hello. Hello. You know, I always think it's rather funny. You meet a girl and she gives you her hand and you spend all evening trying to get it back again. May I take your case? No, thanks. I'll keep it on for a while. Oh, well, can I get you a drink? Thanks, I don't drink. Uh, uh, smoke? I don't smoke either. <coughs> You may go, Ramiro. I'll ring when I want supper. Yes, sir. Oh, I had no idea we were dining up here. Ah, oh, well, you see, I thought uh, it's awfully crowded downstairs. It was quite empty when I came through just now. Ah, yes, now, but later. That's the time it's packed to suffocation. Why, if anyone even bends down, they cover him with a tablecloth and put four chairs around him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's better. Won't you take your cape off now? I'll chance it. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Well, you'll find a mirror and everything else you want in there. That's the bedroom. Nice bedroom you've got. You always have fresh flowers by your bed? Uh, fresh, uh, fresh flowers? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. well, of course, the, the maid brought them in. Well, do sit down, won't you? And this perfume? Oh, that, yes. Uh, that's a new disinfectant they're trying out. Must be very expensive to disinfect with temptation. I'll kill that man. What man? Uh, oh, the waiter. He should have been back with supper before now. But you said you'd ring when you wanted supper. Oh, yes, so I did. Oh, it's all right. It's just the bell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, how do you usually start these things? Start what things? Well, you see, I'm rather new to all this. Uh, shall we tell stories? Do you know the one about the three skunks? Mother skunk, father skunk, and little Willie skunk? Well, one day, mother skunk said to father skunk, My dear, have you noticed Willie's beginning to smell a little already? <laughs> uh, have a cigarette. Oh, no, of course, you don't smoke, do you? Or drink. Or I could tell romantic tales of the East. You should see the Taj Mahal by moonlight. Oh, no, you should see the Taj Mahal by searchlight. There's something about your eyes. What? I like them, both of them. Oh, hell, come in. Come in! Did you rang, sir? Yes, I rang, and you don't have to knock twice before you come in. No, sir? No. Oh. And you may serve supper, Romero. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now you're talking. Is there anything Madame would like in particular? No, thanks. But uh, if I want you, I'll press the bell. Uh, I understand, madam, and I will come running to your resistance. That'll be all, Romero. Thank you, sir. That was a rather pointed remark. I like to be sure. The lady likes to be sure. And do you anticipate trouble? I don't know, but it only took you five minutes to get to my eyes. Oh, there, there. I'm sorry. Forgiven? Forgiven. You see, Rory... May I call you Rory? What, in six minutes? I may need that bell myself. I joined Miss London because I thought it would be swell to help the boys, to take them around to shows or movies or go out places with them. Oh, I'm not kidding myself. I'm not Hedy Lamar. But, well, if they want company, I'm game. But only for company. Do you follow me? Follow you? I'm way ahead of you. So, Rory, I don't want to waste your evening. I'll understand, and you can ring someone up before it's too late. Shall we dance? You know, the trouble with you is you're at the dangerous age. You don't know my age. There are three ages when women are most dangerous. 17, 18, and any time after 19. You've evidently made a study of it. My old man used to say, Son, make love to every woman you meet. If you only get 19% on your outlay, it's a good investment. Well? Excuse, please, supper. Well, do I have to pay for it before you can put it on the table? Oh, no, sir. Mm, or dear. We'll ring for the next course. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Onion. Uh, uh, no onion. Why, are you planning ahead? Let's just say I don't like onions. Romero? We'd have awful fights on the onion situation. You'd have to cook your own meal. I can't cook. You'd have to starve. Gail, I think you're grand. But I know this sounds rather like Violet's Weekly. Do you think you could learn to like me? I like your chatter, your cute line of patter, that David Nivenish look. I'd enter your name in my book if you could only cook. I like your dancing, your fox trots and trancing, and oh, that rumba you show. I'd get you by hook or by crook if you could only cook. The way you order a dinner is something I envy, and yes, I'd give a lot for a picture of one thing, you with an apron in a kitchenette, you take my heart and my whole life apart, but that's something I'd overlook, or I wouldn't mind what you took if you could.
Get you by hook or by crook If you could only cook And pass the pepper back If I could choose who I found it at sea with Off some South Sea coast You'd be a heavenly person to be with On a desert isle If you could only roast No bread And what is more You're the type I'd adore To be with me in some shady nook not that I'd need any nook if you could only cook. It looks like it ought to be some sort of fricassee, not in the cookery book. But I wouldn't care how it looks if you could only cook. I know I could turn in just double my earning at cookery lessons I took. Ho, 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 I'd get myself right out of stock if I could only cook. My heart and my whole life apart But that's something I'd overlook Oh, I wouldn't mind what you could If you could only go Gail Yes, Rory? Gail, I feel like I've known you all my leave Is that good? That's very good Gods, who are you? Or me no speak very good like. Me engaged to wait on you are very new. Now, what can I get for you? We have roast beef, rabbit, rice, raisin roll, rhubarb, ravioli. But we've already ordered. Oh, no good. Too much of the mouth. You pay at the meal, five at the bob only. Five at the bob. Look, we know all about that, but bring us whatever we can have for five shillings. Gracias, five at the bob. You have soup, ice cream, potatoes, and a cheese. Wonderful for the figure. Hold for like a dish of one, please. Ta, 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 I thank you. Or you can have soup, apple pie, cauliflower, mustard, piece of bread, and far from shame. That's the best yet. Or you can have soup, roast beef, vegetable marrow, and no bread. Or soup, rice pudding, beans, and fin and haddock. Or soup, cheese, semolina, and salad. Or soup... But we don't want any soup. Or no soup. Since you have peas with beans, with vegetable marrow, with celery and tomato. Just a minute, just a minute. We have already ordered our meal. Savvy? Or you have already ordered. From Romero. Oh, then this must be yours. Please forgive the potatoes being so black. It is a mark of respect. Our head waiter, he died this morning. Are you really a waiter? What do you think I am, a roller towel? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Are we, madame? I used to be washer upper at the Honey Spa Club. Remember? Will madame have some of this lovely beige bread? As for you, monsieur, I suggest you cut out the talking and eat this while it's still barely warm. Where's Romero? Oh, he's tied up. He asked me to keep an eye on you. I go. I come back. Oh, I'm sorry about all that. Oh, never mind him. What were we talking about? You. Now, tell me about yourself. Are you married, in love, engaged? I forget the butter. You've got your thumb in it. I know I don't want him to fall on the floor again. Oh, this is too much. Oh, it's all right, Rory. He's obviously new to the job. Look, waiter, don't come in again unless we ring the bell. Compre? Are we? The bell. ting ling ling Oui. It's getting a little monotonous, isn't it? But I'm enjoying myself. This place is about as private as a letter from Germany. Let's go on to a club after. What do you say? Uh-uh. My time's up at midnight. Oh, to hell with this Miss London nonsense. Black or white coffee? That settles it. Good evening. Who are you? I'm fine, thanks. Who are you? 
Hello. Arthur, will you please go away? Arthur, do you know him? Operator 999 of the Miss London Investigation Bureau. We have spotters everywhere. I'm a sort of happy-go-lucky Gestapo. Well, I must say I'm very flattered. And do all your customers go through the same third degree? There's no need to lose your sense of humour. I find it very difficult to laugh hilariously, but I'm made to look a perfect fool. Oh, nobody's perfect. Shut up, Arthur. Hey! Here, here, quiet, quiet. I will not be quiet. Just a friendly argument, sir. You too can argue with some of the most beautiful girls in England. The name and number's on the card. No, I come to think of it. I suppose it is quite a disappointment for you. There's no need to shout. I'll shout if I want to. What the heck's going on around here? Nothing to worry about, sir. You two can have... Oh, pardon me. I see you run your own firm. I must say, you had the stage set beautifully. And what exactly do you mean by that remark? Fresh flowers, candles, perfume, orchids. Oh, I suppose to the type of men you usually escort, that only means one thing. You listen to me, Captain Casanova. This is the first time I've ever been an escort, and it's probably the last. And you listen to me, Miss Dubarry. This is the first time there's been a woman in my rooms, and there's no probably about it. It is the last. Oh. Oh, what a commotion. What excitement. I have just been kidnapped. Is there anything further I can done for you, sir? Yes, get out before I murder you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute. <laughs> so this is the first time there's ever been a woman in your room. And the last. I suppose you wear these with your dress uniform. <laughs> Dear sir, unless we receive your check per return for the six months' rent now in arrears, we shall terminate your lease forthwith. That, my lad, is a final notice. Oh, that's nothing. I've had worse notices than that. This isn't a joke. Don't let it worry you. They can't turn us out into the street, the same as they can't take away a workman's tools. Are you sure of that? It's what they call restraint of trade. But we do owe them six months' rent. Oh, they can sue us for the rent, all right, but they can't turn us out into the street. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, I still think we ought to send them a letter. All right, we will send them a letter. What key would you like it in? You can start sirs. No, wait a minute. Dear sirs. I'll put O oh, sirs. O oh, sirs? Yes, it sounds more pleading. After all, we do owe them a bit. Make it dear sirs. But I'd put O oh, sirs. Never mind, I'll start again. Hey, steady with the paper. We've only got a few sheets. There's a spare roll in the drawer. Oh, go away. Go on, go away. We have another garden. Come on, let's start again. Dear sirs. <coughs> Dear sirs, right? Further to your action. How much further? We're nearly in the gutter now. Don't argue. Right down further to your action. Right. Down. Further. Not right down further. I said right down further. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this sounds so much the same. Never mind. we we'll start again. Further to your action with reference to the six months arrears of rent. Right. Here, let me do it. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's you. Working in the open air? How very wise. Just like being in the country. <laughs> Look, take that to Mr. Middleton, will you? There's a good boy. Mm. Been extending your premises? Yeah, we've overflowed onto the pavement. Before long, we'll be running down the gutter. <laughs> well, where do I put them? Here. Yeah. Put what? The seeds of wisdom which bring forth the refreshing fruit of knowledge. Is she not? Oh, I didn't tell you about her, did I? She sold me a lovely set of books <laughs> that I don't want. Here they are. Thirty-six volumes of sheer necessity. That's them. We haven't got enough trouble. You have to buy a Boots library. Put them down there, Horace. Oh, no, not there, Horace. This part of the pavement's used as an artist studio in the afternoon. Look, Miss, who is it? I, I know he probably signed for this lot, but honest, some days he doesn't know what day it is. It's like taking money from a child. <laughs> All right, don't overdo it. You see, in our present circumstances, we... Oh, I know exactly how you're placed. You feel you don't want the books anymore because you've nowhere to put them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
I knew she'd understand. But of course, the customer's point of view is our first consideration. Service with a smile. We bring a smile and leave one behind. Now just sign here and all your troubles are over. I'll leave a copy with you and the van will be back in half an hour. After that, you don't have to worry about the books anymore. I see. You'll call back for them in half an hour. Oh, well, we're not taking the books back. <laughs> for a further payment of £16.10, we are bringing you a handsome bevel glass mahogany case to put them in. Good morning. That's how it happened at Waterloo. I hardly opened my mouth. Well, that'll teach you a lesson. People are like fish. Neither would get into trouble if they kept their mouths shut. Oh, that's awfully good. I must remember that. People with fishy's mouths. Listen. It's the Pied Piper of Bloomsbury. What is this, a Rodine outing? No, sir. I rounded up all our Miss London's and they got their photographs for the file. That's quite right. I told them to. What a lovely lot of earth scorches. Hello. Look, Miss Arden, Mr. Bowden. Joe's explained the situation. And well, of course, you may not want to. We're all game to carry on. You are? Isn't that marvellous? Oh, I'd kiss you if I could reach you. <laughs> oh, Virginia, not at this hour. Uh-uh. What's the matter with Sheila? Good morning, Asper. This is the first time I've been up so early since the last time I was up so late. Oh, yes, you had a date with the commando. Did you have fun? Fun? He spent the whole evening trying on bedroom slippers. Oh? If there's any way we can help about all this, you know we'll do it. Thanks, kids. This is swell of you all. Right now we are in a bit of a spot. Oh, we'll be all right as long as it doesn't rain. As a matter of fact, we did get a couple of customers before they disconnected the phone. Oh, yes, Mr. Sweeney or something. It's in the book. <laughs> the book. Tell them to reconsider my offer. <laughs> And you do the same. <laughs> the book. The book. Ah. I... Here we are. Trooper Sweeney of the American Army wants a Miss London to show him the sights at three o'clock. Blonde de Brunet. Well, his exact words are, send me a dame with a cute carriage and the right kind of figure to pull it. Woo! That sounds like it might be Iris. Thanks for the compliment. Do you know all the sights of London? I should do. I've been out with most of them. <laughs> Don't look at me. Okay, my gal. Outside the Washington Club at 3 o'clock. It's a date. How will I know him? Oh, he says you can't mistake him. He'll be the only soldier there with a smile of anticipation on his face. <laughs> Hope I don't disappoint him. Next is Commodore Joshua Wellington, Athenaeum Club. He says he found our number stuck in his briefcase. That was me. I stuck him all over the place. Tell him I had a stick. Well, Commodore Wellington is a wealthy bachelor. He says he's never taken a girl out before. That's why he's wealthy. He sounded quite harmless. He wants a Miss London that's good at dancing. That's his hobby. Nice cozy night for someone. Who likes dancing? I don't mind dancing, but how old is he? As long as he's not too old to put his signature on the check. Oh, yeah. And now we're on it, let's get this money question ironed out. When you're out with guys who can afford it, you can go to town for that prisoners of war fund. But only with guys who can afford it. The more money we get, the more prisoners we help. And that goes for all of you. Remember... If you want to really rate with every man you have a date with, if one day you hope to be a wife, if you want to make the grade, then you must call a spade a spade, if you would be a great success in life. If you like the pounds just as much as the pen, listen to the voice of experience. Thank you. 
What's all this? Now, come on, move on there, move on, move on there. You can't go singing and dancing in the public side affairs. Well, Ginger Rogers does it. Well, she won't if I catch her. And what's all this obstruction? Company meeting. Yes, we've just declared our usual dividend. Well, you can't do it here. The law says you've got to move on. Does the law say where to? Comrade Four Eyes, the capitalists have taken our house, our roof. Comrade Four Eyes, for the sake of the child, have pity. I don't know nothing about that. You've got to shift this stuff. It's no use arguing with the law. The comrade says we've got to shift it, we've got to shift it. Come on, girls, push. To you! To you! There, now everybody's happy. What's the idea? We've shifted it. But you've got to shift it right away. Oh, no. No, not according to the law. He's right. As long as we move when we're told to, that's all we've got to do. It's like a Costa's battle. Have a pound better find old streets. Here's yeah, the Victoria plums are lovely. I've got some cocktails off the pippins here. They rattle every day. They... What's the idea? Oh, it all comes under the trespass act. I don't know nothing about that. His mama don't told him. Well, you must tell him. But definitely. I have here 36 willow pattern bound volumes of hydrated knowledge. Tea for trespass. <laughs> May I trespass? <clears throat> hmm. Here we are, tea for trespass. Never mind tea for trespass. If this stuff isn't cleared away when I come back, it'll be C for clink for one or two of you. Now, come on, move on there, move on. Do you think we can get all this lot into one cell? Don't be silly, they can't turn us off the public side affair. Where till I find it? Well, I don't know. We, we might get somebody to move the stuff, and then again, we might not. Where's Arnold? The lad's never here. <sighs> hey, listen to this. Timidity is the clog of enterprise. Be bold if you would succeed. That's what's the matter with us. We're not bold enough. Here we are, owing a few paltry pounds when we ought to be owing thousands. That doesn't move the furniture. No, but it's going to. We're going to take a suite of offices in a five-star hotel. Why stop at a suite? Let's take a floor. With hot and cold chambermaids running in every room. We won't have to pay anything. We'll do a deal with them. They give us the accommodation. We'll make our Miss Londons bring all our clients to their hotel. Say, you may have something there. You've got something here, too. Did you buy a cab? It looks like our old friend Captain really found. So this is Miss London Limited. Nice airy offices. I don't think that's funny. I take it I'm not the most popular boy in the school. No, you can't. You've been expelled from the remove for eating suckers in prep. Uh-uh. This is me. And I have to draw a dancing commodore. I came here for three reasons. First, your gloves, madame. Where did you get these? You left them in my cab. If last night's any criterion, you're lucky that's all you left in the cab. Ah, last night. That's the second reason. I want to apologize. Though I really didn't do anything I should be ashamed of, did I? I must have notice of that question. Seems my mother was right about moustaches. Well, at least I've trundled his moustache down here to apologize. And reason number three? I want to see Miss Martin again. You see, she misunderstood. She thought your gloves belonged to some glamorous young thing, and of course they didn't. Well, thanks. Remind me to have my face lifted. She had it lifted once when she saw the bellied fellow again. I seem to be the best brick dropper in town. Look, would you give me an address? Maybe I could send her some flowers. Sorry, no private address is given. But I'm not in love with the girl. I just think she's a lot of fun. Uh, can I book her again? Look, son, we can't take any more business until we get four walls. And a ceiling and some blotting paper. <laughs> Remind me to get this cherry stuffed, will you? Oh, sorry. But you don't seriously mean that you haven't got an office to go to. Oh, don't be silly. We've got the whole floor of a five-star hotel. You have? Yes, you don't know a five-star hotel where we can get a whole floor, do you? Well, I don't know how many stars we rate, but what's wrong with my hotel? The Splendid? Yes, why not? Business is terrible anyway. They'd probably give you a reduced rate. Don't look at me. It's his idea. Yes, I've worked out a lease lend agreement. I'm sure if the manager only heard the it... Manager? But why waste time with the manager? Go to the proprietor. Yes, why not? We might as well be thrown out by the proprietor as the manager. Well, it's going to be a long winter if we don't get it over one way or the other. 
Here, will you take us there? What now? Never put off till tomorrow when you can do a proprietor today. Oh, wait a minute. We can't all go. Somebody's got to stay behind and look after the 36 volumes. I'll stay. I've got nothing to do till 3 o'clock. Me neither. I've got nothing to do till the Commodore ups anchor. Oh, ta, ta ever so. Well, so long, girls. See you in the suite. Bye-bye, girls. Bye -bye. Look after everything. Don't forget there's a penny on the bottle. <laughs> Anybody about? Well, let's walk straight in. Let's be at the thing and he wants it. Not that door, that one. Oh, that one. Yes, please? No, thanks. We've just had breakfast. Excuse, please. If you're going in there, you can't, so don't. But we want to see the proprietor. Have you got an appointment? Have we got an appointment? <laughs> no. Nobody can see the proprietor and we've got an appointment. But this is urgent. Yes, if it rains, all our furniture will be spoiled. Look, mister, this is important business. Lady, I'm crying my eyes out, but nobody sees the proprietor and we've got an appointment. Well, can't we see him for a minute to see if we can make an appointment to see him for a minute? Look, nobody sees the proprietor and we've got an appointment. Don't you know the second cause for that? Well, how do we make an appointment? You write to him by correspondence or vice versa. Who's Witzer Walzer? Can't you understand plain English? Witzer Walzer means the front is in the back, in the back is in the front. Only Witzer Walzer. You've been listening to the postscript of the 9 o'clock news. Look, this is getting us nowhere. There must be some way to get in to see him. Nobody sees, sees the proprietor without an appointment. Well, what if the Prime Minister walked in? Ah, that's a different cup of tea. He's an important person. Well, so are we important. Here, just a minute, Teddy. Leave this to me. Now, look here. Would any important person get in? If they was important enough. Such as film stars? Some film stars. Who, for instance? Jack Benny? Or Rochester? Or Rochester? That is Rochester. That's right, boss. This is Rochester. Don't go on and I've been trying to walk around incognito. But Rochester, he's black boy. Oh, he's a bit pale today. He's been donating blood to the Red Cross. Yes, an old boy is a little nurse down there. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a cup of coffee with just the right amount of cream in it? Well, hang a low cut dress on it, mister, and there she is. And oh, Mr. Benny. Uh, what now, Rochester? Now I know you're pulling my feet. You're not Jack Benny. I saw him in Charlie's aunt. That's a sore point with me. Skip it. <laughs> All right, then. Benny's out. Would you let Jesse Matthews in? Jesse Matthews? Oh, obstetively. That is Jesse Matthews. I sing when I don't sing, I don't when I'm singing, and oh, how lovely it feels. It looks more like the Phantom of the Opera. You'll probably hear from my lawyer about that remark. Come, let us not bandy badinage with this churl. Jesse Matthews? Or could it? We've got to get into the boss somehow. I can see this is going to be a battle of wits. That leaves you unarmed for a start. I've got it. Arthur, you can write the article for us. Me? How? Well, look, everyone says you look like him. You're the same height, glasses and everything. Go in and say you're Arthur Lasky. Say, it's not a bad idea at that. Here, put these on. Oh, Arthur Lasky, I can't stand that silly little man. Oh, please try it, Arthur. We've got to get in somehow. Think of all the kids waiting in the street. Yeah, but our furniture. All right, I'll do it for you, but I wouldn't do it for anybody else. And a boy. Arthur Lasky, though. He stinks. <laughs> Hello, playmate. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And in case you didn't quite catch what I said, I thank you. Get it? Get what? I'm Arthur Askey. Arthur Askey? Big-hearted Arthur, that's me. Never heard of him. But you must have heard of me. You are Arthur Askey? That's right. Prove it. Say something for me. You can have your birds, you can have your bees, but to me they're simply from. For the thing I'd really like to be is not a bird or a flower or a bee or a fish or a camel or a jumping flea, but a moth, a little moth. Fluttering round a candle, fright to go near. 
sitting on your chassis and feeling very queer, or bashing out your brains against the chandelier like a moth, a little moth. Oh, light and dairy, just like fairy, chewing up yards of cloth. But think of the joys and the fun, me boys enjoyed by a flighty, quite all righty, just had a nibble off a lady's nighty, non-stop little on. Nothing like him. If you're Arthur Askey, then I'm Max Bacon. Hello? No, sir, Governor. Your secretary would be here if she was present, but she ain't. Yes, sir, Governor. Right away. Yes, sir. The proprietary want me, so it's no use any of you geezers trying to gate crash. Scramble. Now I know what a dumb waiter is. Well? Did you do it? No good. I told you I didn't look like him. Now what? Wait a minute. I think I've got it. I know what we'll do. We'll make this a combined operation. Now what's the matter with you? First you want to see the proprietor, then you don't want to see the proprietor. What's wrong with you, huh? You want I should take you to see the proprietor? All right, I tell you. So, you're the mites who want to desert the sinking rat. Objection overruled. Remind me to spit in your eye sometime. I never forget a face, but in your case, I'm going to make an exception. My friend and me would like to see the proprietor. Is the gentleman in? Yes, I'm in. You the proprietor? No, I'm the gentleman. The proprietor's through there. <laughs> can you smell something burning? No, I don't think so. Neither can I, but most people can if you ask them. What's this, the donkey serenade? No, he wants to know if you might get him a job. Now, look here. Shut up, you've got a job. Is he a steady worker? Listen, if he was any steady, he'd do the move. All right, I'll give you a job. Start at five dollars a week, and if you work hard, I'll cut it down to three in no time. And don't yes me. I don't like yes men. I want you to tell me exactly what you think, even if it costs you your job. Hello? Yes? Mr. Jones in the third row is wanted in the manager's office. Excuse, please. Why you pick a fight with me? I don't pick a fight with you. You go Uruguay, I go Paraguay. You think you go find something for me to do, huh? You can keep an eye on the guy who keeps an eye on me. Do you want a job? <laughs> you better keep an eye on him, too. Okay. I don't say okay, say all right. Okay means all right. Never mind what it means. Say all right. All right. Okay. Now open that door. Open. Says who? Says to me. <laughs> Oh, please, what the... You! Well, what is this? Can't all night? Rory, are you waiting to see the proprietor, too? I am the proprietor. Are you kidding? No, I'm afraid not. You see, this happens to be my hotel. You mean all this is... Is there somewhere soft where I can faint? I was wondering where you'd got to. You must be getting a great kick out of this. Personally, I don't think it's funny. No, neither do I. And for two pins, I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. Don't hold me back, Joe. I'm not holding you back. Well, grab hold of me before I get into trouble. I'll clinch the deal. You can have a suite of rooms and make it the registered offices of Miss London Limited. I knew it. He's a great guy, a great guy. Do you mean we can move in right away? Right away, on conditions. Conditions? Don't you lay a finger on one hair of her head. Tonight's my last leave night. Not that you'll be sorry, but I am sorry. And I'm going to drown my sorrow in a party. I'm going to invite all the boys I know whose leave is up tonight. Wonderful. You supply the wine and the song and we'll supply the women. You know, he's a bright little man. And for that, we get a free suite? Well, not quite there. There is another condition. I know. We can wash up after the supper. No, oh, no, nothing as drastic as that. No, I simply make it a condition that amongst the girls who come is Gail Martin. Gail Martin? I'm afraid Gail isn't with us now. No, she handed in her cards after last night. Is it urgent you find somewhere to park your furniture tonight? Urgent? It's priority. Hmm. A couple of more moves, we'll be out in the tram line. Well, it's just as urgent that I see Gail Martin again. Cheers. We keep telling you Gail Martin's resigned. That's right, and he doesn't live here anymore. Sorry, fellas. Better luck at the other hotel. Wait a minute. Arthur, you're going to Waterloo Station and talk Gail into coming. You know very well she won't come. He's her best enemy. She's got to come. Well, I'm not going. She'll throw the station at me. Here, let Joe go. Go on, Joe. Have a go, Joe. Why don't you toss for it? Good idea. Here. Heads you go, tails I don't. Agreed? Agreed.
35 Portsmouth Harbour train from platform 8. Change at Guildford for Horsham Brown. Salisbury, Templecombe, Millbourne Port, Sherborne. <coughs> Arthur! Yes, here I am, like the bad penny. <laughs> Still, this is no time to discuss my salary. Quiet, Arthur, I'm announcing. On the exit of the train, change at Chard Junction for Chard. I hope it's all right me coming up here. Oh, sure. The railway company likes me to have my friends around me. The 255 Alton train, platform 5, change at Weybridge for Adelson and Chertsey. I, 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 I just came up here to congratulate you. You were a big success as a Miss London. Everybody's saying what a big success you were. Who's everybody? Well, Terry and Joe and me and Rory. The 35 Portsmouth Harbour train from platform 8, change at Guildford for Horsham Branch. So everybody's pleased. Of course, it was a grand evening. Oh, heavenly. We're going to have new offices in the Hotel Splendid. We've got the whole first floor. And Rory says if only you... The 310 for Bournemouth West. Change at Southampton Central for Redbridge and Cows. Oh, nobody wants to hear about Redbridge and Cows. Switch that on, Arthur. Do you want me to lose my job? Listen, Gail, Miss London Limited's got the chance of her career. We've got West End offices in the Splendid. If... If what? If the owner will let us have them. And he says he will if... If what? If you'll come back to us. Me? Yes, he was there last night and saw you with the life and soul of the party, so do come back. You see, Rory says... Switch that on, Arthur. Someone's supposed to be announcing. The 166 for tooting back stops at all stations to York. Change at Lower Sydenham for the Outer Hebrides. Arthur, will you please get out of here? But Rory says he... I don't care what Rory says. But you don't understand. He owns the Hotel Splendid. I don't care if he built it. People are waiting to hear their trains. The 2-2 for Q departs from Platform 2. The 222 departs from Platform 2-2. Two two. You can tell Captain Rory or more from me that I'm not interested in him, his hotel, or anything connected with him. I'm through. But you don't understand. If you won't meet Rory, Rory won't back Ski. Ski won't hold water. Water won't quench fire. Fire won't bite pig. Pig won't get over. Stalin would be thrown out on the street again. I'm sorry for you and the girls, but I won't have anyone being sorry for me. So the answer's no. Capital N-O. What's the meaning of this? Have you gone mad? What are you doing in here, sir? This is the control room. Do you know what that means? Yes, sir. It means we ought to keep our control, sir. You're causing chaos down there. Sorry, sir. Get out. Yes, sir. Carry on, London. <laughs> but Arthur, you look wonderful, doesn't he? Quite the most distinguished at the party. You really think so? No, but there's so many wars. Why start another? Hmm? Oh, don't pay any attention to her. She thinks she's still out with Cuba Sweeney. Oh, you mean the American she took out this afternoon? Took out in quotes. She turned out to be a Philadelphia wrestling champion. Oh, dear. Did she have trouble? She won three falls out of four. Oh? Well, anyway, Arthur, I like you. I should think so. It cost me 30 pounds. Mine's a lot of money. Oh, mind you, I got nine pair of pants with it. <laughs> Well, here's to Miss London Limited. Business is booming. We've had 23 orders tonight already. So let us couple the dignity of the past with the greatness of the future. Uh, oh, no, that's something else, isn't it? Cheerio. <coughs> Pardon me, hiccups. <laughs> oh. What is this, illumination night? Oh, Joe, this is terrible. They've hired me the wrong suit. It won't go out. You must have a short somewhere. <laughs> Let me find it for Oh, no. Come on. No, no, the girls. Stop, please. Don't. Let me have a look. I'm not about you. Now, look, well, boys, yeah. I can't dance with all of you at once. I'm not an octopus. Well, let's make this a private pool, Joe. Okay, who's the first victim? I am. Mm. Sorry to butt in, but where's Gail? Oh, I guess she'll be along any minute now. You wouldn't kid me, would you? No, Arthur went and fixed it. Good. Otherwise, Captain Simon Legree. Okay, you can call off the bloodhound. Oh, let's go. Oh, Arthur, would you put Mr. Legree's mind at rest about Gail coming? Oh, Gail. Oh, yes, she's coming. Oh, she's late. Yes, isn't she? But you know what these taxis are. Drink. What's that? They want me to play the piano for them. No, I didn't say nothing. Of course I will. They want me to play for them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you mind sitting down? You may go. You may stay. All right, you can all go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I come before you as a walking miracle of modern musical achievement. Six weeks ago, I couldn't tell the black notes from the white notes. But today, we washed the piano and I can pick out the white notes quite easily. For years, I had no ear for music. Every time I heard a slow tune, I stood up in case it was God Save the King. But today, 
Here are now, ladies and gentlemen, before your very eyes. I'd like to play for you on this mighty, whoa, the mighty sideboard here. Wash hand stand. Oh, no, it's not a wash hand stand. <laughs> no ashtrays. I'd like to play for you, Rachmaninoff's balloon in C sharp, my dear. That's in case anyone comes in late and wonders what the hell's going on. Hello? It's a bit difficult after that. Well, now, having padded to your classical side, I'm going to play you a little medley of popular songs, but I don't want you to sing or whistle these choruses. I'd much rather you all sat back and enjoyed the sheer beauty and the technique of the playing as it leaves me at present. I entitle this Memories. Memories. Well, it went very well at the Brownies concert. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for my piece de resistance. Sorry, Terry, I don't know how he got in there. Never mind about that. Where is Gail Martin? Is she coming or isn't she? Oh, Gail, well, you see, Terry... Yes or no? No. I didn't know how to tell you. You see, you were so excited about getting offices here. What's the good of being excited? We haven't got offices here now. Rory O'Moore wasn't kidding. No Gail, no office. I tried to explain that to her. Well, the Little Nell Company is out in the snow again. Hmm. Oh, Terry, I think you're wonderful. You've got such lovely shoulders. What do you do with your old blades? Huh? Terry, could I come out in the snow with you? I mean, couldn't we sort of keep the same set of books? Sort of get together and have the same maid and let the milkman call you missus? Arthur, are you trying to propose to me? Trying? Haven't I done it yet? Oh, I wish I was Clark Gable. For just 15 minutes. I suppose you'd boast about it the rest of your life. No, but you would. I used to pose before my glass and plan what I would be. The years rolled by and now, alas, I'm still no more than me. Haven't got any claim to a place in the Hall of Fame. I was once in the phone book, but then they misspelled my name. I know that you would say no if I were Gable, but oh, I'm only me. I should have you done on air, but I'm not ready to stare. I'm only me. I'd buy you things as well that will work doesn't sell if I had Rockefeller's LSD. But oh, 
I'm nothing like all these folks. I'm just a little Joe Dokes. I'm only me. I've had the misfortune to fall, but I'm still no one at all. I'm only me. I don't know what to roll me on you, but still I know what to do. I'm only me. Though I look mild and meek, my local boy techniques improving every week with pills I see. And though I've got no it, heaven knows I've got my these and my those. I'm only me. Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, why don't you knock? Don't worry, my little turtle dove, I too was once in love. We had a foolish quarrel, a few angry words, and we parted. Never to see each other again. Never, thank heaven. You wouldn't like to pick a foolish quarrel with me, would you? All I want from you is a pen to borrow, and then I will go. I'll give you a pen to keep if you stick around. Thanks, my little chickadee, thank you. What's this? Wonderful bargain, 36 volumes bound in willow calf. 36, oh! Oh, hello, Mr. Burton. Now, what are you doing here? You're not a Miss London. The lady's explained that, but I shall be most honored if she'll stay anywhere. You'll be more than honored. You'll be clipped. Before you know it, she'll probably sell you 36 volumes of something. She has. What? The Businessman's Encyclopedia? No, the works of Sir Walter Scott. Oh, so you've changed your act. Oh, I sell all kinds of things. I'll bet you do. As a matter of fact, the Sir Walter Scott volumes of the Companion set your encyclopedia. You know they look wonderful, the other side of your office. I've read all Scott's works. Oh, but these are in special, easy-to-read, open-type print. There's Ivanhoe, Lady of the Lake, Marmion. I've read them all. Are you sure? Oh, yes, I love Scott's Ivanhoe and his Lady of the Lake. And what do you think of his emulsion? I'm just going to read that now. Now, wait a minute. Excuse me, will you? I want a word with you. I think I'm wanted on the phone. Not half as much as you're wanted here. I'll give Gail Martin exactly 15 minutes to get here. Oh, Gail? Oh, she's here. Here? Yes, haven't you seen her? No. Oh, yes, she's somewhere around. Oh, I remember. She's washing her hand. Washing her hand? She had to change her tie. Yes, I'll go and see if she's ready. Quick, in the bathroom. What? You're going in the bathroom. But I don't want to go in the bathroom. You're going in there and you're going to stay there all the evening. What am I going to do in there all the evening? I'll read the telephone book. And if anyone knocks, make a noise like a lady washing her hands. I didn't know Gail had arrived. How long has she been here? Gail? Yes. I didn't know she was here. It's all right, Teddy. We can't keep it a surprise any longer. I told him. She's still washing her hands. Oh, well, I'll wait. Oh, I wouldn't. She might feel embarrassed coming out and finding you here. Yes, you go back to your guests. I'll bring her out to you. Oh, that's fine. Uh, is she very annoyed? Not yet. Oh, good. I'll keep my fingers crossed. All right, give. What goes on? Well, I had to say she was here, Teddy. He was beginning to threaten. So where does that get us? She can't wash her hands all night. <laughs> Shh, quiet. What is it? Well, I've read that. We'll read it again. There's someone at the door. Come in. Excuse, please, if you'll be so kindly. There is a young lady called Miss King asking for Mr. Borden. Miss King? That's Sheila. Have her come in. I am in. All in. Great grief. What's happened to you? Did you have to walk home? Nothing so easy. But what have you been doing? Dancing. Just dancing. Oh, of course, you've been out with Commodore Wellington. Just call him Warsaw Matilda and leave it at that. Sheila, what happened? We saw you limping through like a wounded spitfire. She's been dancing. That's right, dancing. No supper, no cigarettes, no rest, just dancing. Where's the bunny? He's downstairs in the lobby waiting for another partner. Another partner? Perhaps he's thought out a new step. Well, we must keep our customers satisfied. We send him a new partner. Don't look at me. What about Virginia? Not with my feet. Then we'll invite him up here to join the party. There must be someone up here he can dance with, even if it's only Joe. I'll say goodnight to you while you recognize me. Uh, uh, now listen, go downstairs and in the lobby you'll find a Commodore. Come again? A Commodore, a Commodore. What, downstairs in the lobby? Yes, go and ask him to come up and join the party. Uh, or get me another drink. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter about the drink now, just get the Commodore. Yes, sir. Drink?
mind. What is it, my man? The gentleman says, will you come upstairs and join the party? Yes, later, later. Uh, are you the Commodore or are you with the Sylvester? Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about the dancing. Uh, music affects me like this. Yes. Uh, well, come along, carry on. <laughs> Sorry, I'll bring you coffee afterwards. The Commodore. Ah, Commodore Wellington, I'm Arthur Bowden. Welcome to somebody else's party. Very nice, very nice. This is Miss Terry Arden, my little friend. Oh, very nice. I'm sorry, our Miss London couldn't take it, but I'm sure you'll find someone up here to dance with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you must take off Carmichael. Gail. Rory. Ow. Well, I'm here. How long does the contract say I have to stay? Well, the party of the first part, that's Rory, simply said that the party of the second part, that's you, should come to the party of the party of the first part, that's this. Gail, you're looking wonderful. You're looking too. Gail, I must talk to you alone. I don't need a house to fall on me. You stay here, Arthur. Gail, look at me. That's the most horrible suggestion you've made yet. Now, now, it's not polite to bear your fangs in public. I'm sure you must be wanted in the other room. I'm sure I must be wanted somewhere. You stay right here. Look, let's get the record straight right away. I'm here because you made a deal with Miss London Limited and for no other reason. I don't have to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. All I ask is that you give me a magazine or something and leave me somewhere quiet. And I'll wait till the party's over and go home with the others. Yeah, yeah. The defense rests. A wonderful speech. Did it take you long to learn? For two pins, I'd leave now. Very difficult to get pins. You won't leave now because you're going to be left for the magazine somewhere nice and quiet. I'm afraid it's engaged. You can't come in here. I'm washing my hands. You'd better let him out before he starves to death. This way, Miss Martin. How much longer do you want me to stay in here? Move over. I'm coming in for a rest, too. You can call me if you change your mind. If I call you, it won't mean I've changed my mind. It'll mean I've lost it. Do you sit alone? Do you dream and sigh? Do the thrills of life seem to pass you by? Do your demands do you sit and watch all the happy things? Do you envy them for their love affairs? If so, next time your heart feels shy.
played me out I too am sure that I would enjoy All of the earth that happens when girls meet boys Excuse, please. There's three gentleman geezers inside. <laughs> gentleman geezers? Well, I hope the geezer in my bathroom isn't a lady. No, this is our policeman, copper, and two sailors. Two sailors? They must have lost a boat or something. We haven't got a boat floating down the pantry, have we? They're not looking for a boat. They're looking for a man called Arthur Bowden. Arthur Bowden? Do we know anyone called Arthur Bowden? Only you, sir. Me? Oh, of course. I'd forgotten about him. What's this, a raid? We understand you have a Mr. Arthur Bowden here. And here he is in person. Not a myth or a mirage or a talking likeness, but me, myself. I've asked that, Romero. Get the gentleman some rum. You are the burden. Aye, aye, sir. I'm going to arrest you as an absentee under the Compulsory Service Act. Aye, aye, sir. No, no, sir. There must be some mistake. No mistake, ma'am. Well, I've never been absent from anything. I've had prizes for punctuality and attendance. What's he done? Evading compulsory service. We're notified for the Navy on May the 1st, June the 21st, and July the 30th. Is it true, Arthur? Of course not. I never received any papers. Wait a minute. W would these notices be in long buff colored envelopes with their HMS on them? They would. Oh, he's got thousands of those. I thought they were income tax. Romero said you wanted some rum, sir. There. You better wait here, Meredith, and I'll go and get his travelling voucher. Now you stand here and behave yourself. Aye, aye, sir. Is there any objection to me sitting down, Meredith? None that I know of. What time is our train? Eight bells. My watch appears to be half a bell slow. <laughs> Arthur! Terry! Oh. Here, you're not allowed to talk to the prisoner. Well, we won't say the word, will we, love? And the prisoner's not allowed to talk to you, neither. Neither. Oh, Meredith. But well, it ain't my fault, it's me orders. Well, we can't talk to you, can't we, Meredith? Oh, well, there's nothing in orders against that, miss. Where are they taking you, darling? I don't know, my sweet. You will write to me, won't you? Of course I will, and promise me while I'm away, be true to me, Meredith. All right, all right, break it up now. We haven't got time for that. Listen, sailor, you better be nice to him. Remember, he knows the Commodore. Oh, so you know the Commodore. Know him? He owes me two pounds ten for one of my girls. Come on. Oh. The 814 Portsmouth and South Sea train leaving platform 13 in five minutes. Isle of white passengers make their own way from Portsmouth and South Sea to Portsmouth Harbour. Goodbye, Maury. Good luck and God bless. Where is she? Where is she? Where is who? Miss Arden. Half a league on at 12 knots and you can't miss her. Arthur. Will you stop doing this? You're making my arm ache. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I thought you were an officer. Well, I, I got your message. What is this proposition you have? Look, I'll dance with you till your arches drop if you take care of Arthur in the Navy. Never. I wouldn't take refuge underneath another man's arches. Just you leave him to me. Now, look here, my boy. You're in the senior service now, so you must always see that you are cool. Well, it's au revoir. Oh, don't say au revoir. We'll be seeing each other again. 
And look after Miss London Limited, won't you? Of course I will. And Terry? Yes, Arthur.